and I'm happy that everyone on the team actually stepped up at times and it just gets me excited to play again with my teammates, you know. Actually, kick off the interview right away because like you must be exhausted but thank you so much for making yeah. time despite oh i can hear myself or something but yeah how are you feeling after that series i'm feeling uh, insanely exhausted but i'm also proud mm -hmm. of uh, us coming back we were clearly the underdogs coming into the series and being able to fight back against the best team in the league is something that i'm very very proud of very proud of my teammates and um <laughs> Yeah, I mean, sadly we couldn't we couldn't get the win in the end, but um, there's a loser's bracket and I've already won going into loser's bracket before, so I can do it again. And I'm just really, I'm really exhausted. <laughs> okay, thank you so, so much for making time for this interview. interview. You know, coming into this series, the fans, the endless days, I'm crown shot at the broadcast. Everyone was predicting it to be a 3-0, but you took it all the way to the silver scrape. What was your resolution for yourself or the team as you came into today's series? Um, honestly, I had a really, really good feeling waking up. So oh. <clears throat> I was actually thinking that I was going to win today. And we were really, really close. And even when we were down 0-2, I knew that we can at least take a game from them, you know, at least make them sweat, at least make them respect us. And I'm pretty sure we made them respect us, you know. Um, they, were, they were using the lobby chat uh, after every game and after we get some wins they stop using it so i think we got some respect on our name you know and that is that is already a win for us yeah. that is a win for schalke uh, i think we have gotten um new presence on on the league and if Fnatic doesn't respect us we're gonna beat them and another thing that definitely earned you to and everyone's respect today was your darius because you managed <laughs> to get them to ban darius at game five and did you know that G2 was going to constantly blind pick Zion and did you were you already prepared to counter that with Darius? Um Yes, I mean <laughs> the, the, the 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 pick came very instant, right? Mm. After they picked it because we were actually prepared. Because Wonders Champion Pool was very narrow, I think is what you call it. Mm. Like he doesn't really play a lot of champs at, at the moment, mm. so uh, I just I could prepare for it very well, and I think theirs was a very good pick in that series. Yeah, I, I did get a pentacle. It was my very first pentacle, actually. Oh, really? In pro I didn't play. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so I was really, really happy, uh, and I think that that also put them in a mental disadvantage. You know, getting pentakilled while being up to always very hard to come back from. Are you are you specifically happy? This is a random question. Um, are you specifically happy about getting a pentakill on Darius? I kind of somehow feel like it's a champion that you really like. I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you know, I actually hate this champ. Like, oh, I really? hate it. I I hate it with all my heart. Um, not to play it, but to play against it. Um... It's in solo queue. Every time I just get solo killed. You know, against all like it doesn't matter who the person is. He can be bronze five. I can get solo kills. Um, that's how it is for me, at least in solo queue. That's why I hate him. Uh, I actually <laughs> like to ban it a lot as well. Okay. Um, it's solo queue when because it's just it's just annoying to play against, you know. And I like I showed it today as well that it's it can be really strong, you know. Um, so so um, Shaoke did definitely manage to earn G2's respect. Also, like you know, forcing G2 to not only ban Darius but also Alistair at Game 5 and in general I just think that Shaoke made some really really good draft adjustments throughout the series. Um, I think it was after Game 2 when Shaoke started drafting towards the late game they started seeing a more success. Um, what kind of adjustments did you try to make um, when it came to draft priorities? Um, so we realized that uh, Hecarim and Orianna are winning everything so mm -hmm. we just started picking up Orianna right and in Game 5 they actually banned it and I think Hecarim was not in the game, yeah? Yeah, we had Udyr and they had Volibear. So the two champs that won every game were out, you know? And we were like, okay guys, Orianna's winning every game, Hecarim is winning every game, we have to do something, we need to adjust. And then Abedaga picked up the Ori, I think two games. I don't, I don't know, like I already forgot, like I'm so exhausted as I said. I'm sorry. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think the champs like Ori who are just stable and farming well, you know, and all of a sudden they one-shot you and limit so strong an Alistar 
like it's, it was crazy. He had some crazy plays. Uh, they definitely won us the game in game four. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm very, very excited still. I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to to play next week again. Like playing on stage was so, so fun. Like oh. it was, it was really like I'm home again, you know. Mm-hmm. And the pentakill kind of gave me a warm welcome. Uh, so. Yeah, because I was gonna ask later in the interview, but I might as well as follow up now. How did it feel to come back to the LDC? Like, you know, come back to the studio, come back to the venue. Um, so the the real thing that is missing are obviously the fans, right? Mm. Uh, I think the fans are a really, really big part of being a pro player or being a competitor um, in any kind of sport. And yeah, but still like having to go to the studio to play it, it it just puts you in that mindset you know it just puts you straight into the zone and i just love it you know it's 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 where we all belong as pro players and it's great that uh, riot made this possible you know under these circumstances that we're in and i'm very happy very very grateful to be performing on stage again before I came into this interview, um, I was quickly going through Twitter and I saw your tweet that you actually took a lot of learning out of this series. Um, what would you say is the one learning that you have taken out of today's series? Yeah, I think uh, just the way, like I think I've learned something about our identity mm. as a team and more, you know, mm. and like how we're actually going to win and how like just how to play the map better, you know, when to take fights better. Like G2 is really, really good at taking fights, obviously. They're the best team in the league and it was it was just crazy, you know, like if you didn't adapt in game three, four or five, mm-hmm. uh, these games wouldn't be even slightly close, you know. Um, sure, we, we had some lucky steals on Nash, some lucky steals on Ocean, but uh, we still had a really, really great performance. And I'm happy that everyone on the team actually stepped up at times and it just gets me excited to play again with my teammates, you know. Who would you say is the one MVP for Schalke today? I can't say. Like everyone, <laughs> like really, everyone stepped it up. It was mm. really clutch. Uh, Neon had really, really good shot calling in his first Jinx game, and then Limit had insane engages with Abba together. Uh, I had to pen the kill on Darius, right? Gilius was doing really, really good on the early game. Almost every game, it was just crazy. I think. It was just a great series from both teams, I think. Yes. Like, I'm kind of sad that we lost, obviously, but yeah. I'm also really looking forward to my next game because I know it's not over, you know. And now there's even more pressure on us because now if we lose, we're out, right? But I really like the pressure. It's a part of me and I'm going to embrace it, you know. And I know that this, this is a very standard interview question, but people will genuinely look forward to Fnatic versus Schalke now. What can we expect from this series and what do you think is going to be the deciding factor for Schalke to make it further into the playoffs? Um, I think, honestly, but what's the deciding factor also this series and it's going to be probably in almost every series is our, our mid and jungle. Like, mm. I think mid mid jungle is such an important role and we had so much control. Um, after first game and second game, we realized, hey guys, uh, we really need to fight through mid, you know, and I think uh, Abba can really win against Niski. Niski is a great player, of course. He's also a really good friend of mine. And also it's going to be a banger series because uh, Fnatic really likes to fight and we really like to fight. And it's going to be coming down to who just fights better in those clutch moments, you know, and it's just going to be fun. Like. I can't really say <laughs> it's it's hard to always predict a series because I, I don't think anyone would have predicted that we've almost re- reversed with G2 in in a best of five, you know. Mm. Uh, and I said it before in an interview with Laura um, that anything can happen in playoffs, you know. And that is what we are all coming into with that expectation. And we're just giving it our all, you know. We always think it could be five games and we go with that mindset. Horizon Esports의 애슐리 강입니다. 할 이야기가 많은데 일단 공지를 먼저 할게요. Horizon Esports라는 브랜드가 최근에 시크릿 랩이라는 게이밍 채널 회사랑 스폰서를 합업하게 되었어요. 와. 그래서 시크릿 랩이 LCK뿐만이 아니라 LEC, LCS의 공식 게이밍 채널 스폰서이기도 하거든요. 
그래서 제가 이때까지 코라이즌 리스포츠를 1인 미디어로 운영을 하고 있었는데 이때까지 쉬운 일은 아니었고 그런데 이렇게 시크릿과 같이 큰 스폰서가 들어온다는 것은 제가 고마운 일이 뿐만이 아니라 계속 코라이즌 리스포츠를 운영하고 또 확장할 수 있는 계기가 되었거든요. 여러분이 이때까지 제가 올리는 코라이즌이 올리는 인터뷰를 재미있게 시청하고 계셨다면 유튜브 설명란에 있는 아래 링크를 따라가셔서 시크릿랩에 어떤 물건이 있나 둘러보시기만 해도 좋을 것 같아요. 왜? 만약 구매를 하신다면 저 역시 마진도 떨어지고 좋고 저도 스폰서십을 통해서 앞으로도 지속해서 2021년 내내 더 많은 컨텐츠를 만들 수 있을 것 같으니까 코라이즌 e스포츠 그리고 시크릿랩 많은 사랑과 관심 가져주시면 정말 감사할 것 같습니다. 영상 지켜봐 주셔서 감사합니다.